Might as well go the ahead and get it started. The only way to see these days is to come and be on your show. What, why? What are you talking about? I never see you anymore, man. We used to chat like five times a week. We did? Okay, so yeah. Yeah, in the uh, broadcast he, chat. He does have a kind of cold enough. Uh, finished each other's sentences. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, I missed you, bro. You know, it's been like a, I think a month since I saw you in there. I don't know how long now, it's been now, at this point. Yeah, now I'm down to coming in here to see you. Not that I mind coming here, but, you know, well, it's, only, it's mean, my only chance. So I'm on the hook now for sure. Well, you have Saturday night. You can come hang out with us too there, man. Well, I'm going to take you up on that. You, this is the third time, and it's the charm. Remind, it remind me tomorrow. On. Anarchy? Saturday Anarchy? Yeah, remind yeah. me tomorrow, RBL, and I'll get you a, a copy of the link. That'd be perfect, dude. Fuck yeah. Man. I just keep forgetting to, to send it Getting to you. Getting stupid high talking to rabbits and shit. <laughs> yeah, you gotta send me the link one day. One, one of these days, I'm gonna jump in there too. Yeah, dude, just let me know. I'll drop you, I'll, Sticks or I'll drop you a link. Holy shit, somebody needs to turn the I don't know, in. dude, I have a good time on that show. Is my, uh... I have a blast. Is yeah. my mic fucked up? No, you sound great. No, yeah, you guys are you guys are all good. I'm just overwhelmed with uh, with all the love at the beginning of uh, open lines this evening. It's rather overwhelming for folks who don't know <laughs> how this works. Uh, it's it's basically free form. It is your chance to be a part of Liberty Radio and let us know what is on your mind, just like these fine gentlemen do. Each and every week, if you choose to, if not, that's okay too. We do uh, the voluntarious thing here, so it's uh, you know each to their own, however they want to do it, and uh, and all that good shit. I guess the link to get in is in the Liberty Radio Telegram channel, as well as the New Prisoners Chat channel, uh, and also in our in our super secret. Um, double probation location. Only certain folks know where that is, and, and all those folks know who they are. So uh, there's no need to to name drop anybody. But uh, that's how it works. Kurt Vonnegut. Yeah. So Coop, you were uh, you were in first. What is on your mind this evening? Shit, dude, I don't fucking know, man. I just. Uh... I just go to work and try to survive every day. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm kind of still that storm they were talking about the cyclone bomb side. Cy Dude, we didn't get shift hardly anything here in Salem from that. How far? Like it got hit north and south. Yeah. What so, what part? What part of Oregon is Salem? I'm not familiar with it. So Salem's the capital of Oregon, and that's about an hour away from Portland ish. Okay. 45 minutes to an hour, depending on traffic, I guess. And Portland's like near the coast, right? Yeah. Okay. Right. Does it, well, it's the kind of like how, uh, it's like, um, there's a little spot where you can come in through the river or whatever in between Washington and Oregon. So yeah, it's you know Portland's right up at the top of gotcha. Oregon. Okay. So. Okay. I'm just trying to to picture in my mind because that's one of the few areas of the country that I was not able to get to yet. Maybe one day, who knows? Yeah, maybe it. I don't know, dude. Fuck Portland. I stay the fuck away. I from mean, that if you want place. free magic mushrooms, that's the state to be in. I hear. Yeah. I heard. Yeah, but here's what's fucked up, dude. Is is the cops know where eh, it's probably not an issue. They know now. the spots where, yeah. Yeah. Where people go and pick. So they will be out there waiting for people and shit. I mean, they probably aren't doing that now, but who fucking knows, dude. Was it, it the there's whole state? Chips, right? Was it the Say whole state again? or just Portland that did the decriminalization of all drugs until like the fucking No, city? it was the whole state. It was the whole state. Yeah. That's what I Yeah. Thought. But they weren't prepared for it. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, I mean, they let all the people who can't handle their drugs uh, just fucking go down the drain out there on the streets. I, I saw that shit. They were doing it anyway. There. Ugh. I mean, dude, I'd be, I'd be in Portland. There was one time, dude, I was working on a, so in a on high rise building in Portland, and I look out the window. And there's a dude shooting fucking heroin in his ass cheek, you know. So <laughs> oh, nice. So not to uh, mention all the family type of place. Yeah, but you know, then if you look up a couple, up a ways, you get to see boobies, and you know what I mean. Like there was a couple times we seen people fucking. You know what I mean? It was just <laughs> like what? <laughs> yeah. And the one, the one one time, it, the couple knew we were fucking watching. They were right there in the window getting at it. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. they probably like oh, that they helped. had an audience. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, one of the dudes, one of the plumbers I was with, would work with, dude, he would, dude, he'd jump right out of the van and straight head up to the fucking, he had everything all mapped out. He's like, yeah, I go to this spot and yeah, see the boobs here, see the boobs there. I was like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> one of those guys who the stripper always loves him kind of guy. <laughs> and he was married. You know what I mean? And I'm like, look, dude, I, I like looking at a pair of boobs too, but I'm not going to fucking map it out and fucking run up there as soon as I get on the job site. You know what I mean? <laughs> wow. But, hey, whatever. I mean, to each his own, I guess. Was that before the internet? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like he was writing an app for himself. Like, boob oh, class, dude. Fucking, yeah, boob map. Well, he was Hispanic, dude. So you know how they are. They like to fuck like rabbits. So yeah. Well, I know. That's I know racist. Oregon, I guess. Yeah. Or I guess where where you it's are true. in Oregon didn't get a whole lot from the weather. But I saw the where there the were. Um, Here are my nine brothers. Yeah, there were <laughs> folks in Washington State who have now been without power for uh, three days as a result of the storm. Yeah, yeah I, dude, haven't, I, I haven't heard anything from California. Um, so Northern California and like where the Oregon and California border is, they got hammered with snow. Oh, wow. But that happens like every year in that area. You know what I mean? Where they're shutting the freeway down for, you know, whatever. Um, fucking goo probably got it up in fucking, uh, where he's at and, uh, bend. They probably got mm. snow up there. But yeah, dude, I mean, we had just, we had some rain and shitty day looking days and rain and a little bit of wind and that's it, dude. We haven't really, we must've just caught like the tail end of it or something. Maybe you were just in the sweet spot. Yeah, that too. It's been uh, real great around the East coast where I'm living for the longest time. And then just this week it started getting cold some nasty fucking rain all day and uh just going out and driving amongst the fucking people makes me realize why those eugenicists are out there yeah 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 fucking get rid of people because goddamn you know when you can't do the fucking speed limit because there's a fucking drizzle <laughs> and you got to come to a complete stop before you make your turns man i i can fucking map out ways that uh we probably don't need all these people these people will yeah, try to well. drive in the snow too, Rob. You know that. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's that's one thing I don't like doing at all. I think that's part of the, the the warfare on our minds is to make us kind of agree, like with the eugenicists. You know? I don't doubt that. Yeah. I don't yeah. doubt that at all. I just I just remember like every... we're trying to wake these people up to save themselves, and they won't wake up. So at some point, we get jaded, and we're like, yeah, they useless eaters something you know what i mean yeah well i mean it, it is it's tempting to adopt that mindset because again i i can remember day after day driving in the dc metro area traffic and being like you know it would be so much easier if like 90 percent of these people weren't here <laughs> Because they're the ones causing most of the problems. I mean, it's, you know, I, yeah, I understand. I understand how you find yourself at that place. But the, the problem with it is, you know, the the behavior that we allow from the, the greater populace is 
what brings us to this point. So, well, that's the uh, the price of freedom, my friend, because uh, otherwise, the uh, alternative would be something we probably would all be uncomfortable with. <laughs> Which might be coming. You never know. Who knows? How do you guys feel about this uh, new feel good uh, collaboration of ex Democrats and Republicans blowing a bunch of smoke up everybody's ass about all these things that they're going to do? And well, I think if we got, I think if we got rid of those people, the politicians or whatever, it probably wouldn't be as bad. You know what I mean? I mean, anarchy is a great concept, but it doesn't work on the scale of uh, 320 million people. You got to have some well, kind of. No, like, you, you would have to break it down. Order, maybe. Yeah, you would have to break it down to smaller units. Yeah, that's, absolutely. that's the only that's way it would be. About communism. If you and 30 people want to go be communism on a farm, you have a commune somewhere, it might work. You know, no, it, it would work, dude, it because the government wouldn't be involved in it. It'd just be a community. Right. You know what I'm saying? Nobody is, is. Nobody's telling you gotta, anybody you what to do. They yeah. work together. You know what I mean? Well, There's a town me, called Anywhere in the United States you can go and do that without generating revenue everything. to pay the landlord government fucking taxes or they come with you know the right. sheriffs and fucking you know lock you up and pull you off your land. Well, all I can say for that is when the American people wake the fuck up and realize that we're the ones supposed to be running the government, not the other way around, things might change. Yeah. Absolutely. That's that's the fucking thing. Like people don't like the people have lost sight of the whole idea of I mean, it may have been a bunch of rich fucks and only three percent of the people were into the American Revolution, but I mean it was some solid fucking concepts. You gotta hand it to them propping up this giant welfare state. They they have like a standing army of uh what are they, what are they, uh consigned soldiers or whatever on on the well you know I mean like who wants to take out the the government that's giving them four thousand dollars a month or whatever the fuck? oh yeah 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 dependents you know they're dependents right it's like their their parent so essentially yeah I mean, it, it's the the daddy state the nanny state you know. Taking care of the basic hey, come on, needs bite the of the hand people. That feeds. Exactly. I don't know who's writing this season of Earth, the drama 2025, <laughs> but uh, I, I'm interested to see what happens. I mean, you can argue all you want about, you know, the the deficiencies in people like RFK, but if he's the HHS secretary, um, there's enough people who know him personally who say he really believes the shit he says and I'm sure he talks politically uh, a lot of the times, but I, I'd love to see him go in and tear apart the pharmaceutical industry and whatever they fucking produce has to be tested properly. And it's up Dude, to if he does him. that, he'll end up like daddy and his uncle. If, if you don't see that there's like plants that they base every fucking medicine on and go for the plant-based solution, then, you know, whatever. But as, as long as the people are held accountable for their evil shit, yeah, do a congressional inquiry into the activities of uh, Rockefeller, you know, and and the how, how we got here. Somebody go back out the, way to the source of it. Somebody broke out an old interview of uh, RFK back when like his hair wasn't even fucking fully gray yet, and he was talking about how the, there was no safety studies done on any of these vaccines on the childhood schedule, and <laughs> he was. Uh, like fucking sight where I'm wrong. I, yeah, I and, and I mean, 20 years ago, there weren't that many voices oh, that would stand up and say that kind of shit. You know, there are a lot more voices nowadays. He, I mean, saying. he got fucking, he sued Monsanto, Bear, whatever you want to call him, over Roundup and won. He got the Hudson River cleaned up. Like, the dude has done solid shit for. He does like Aaron Brockovich type shit. So. I don't care if he gets hooked up and bangs whores and has a worm in his head. What the he fuck did he? What the fuck did he have to do with his life? He was born and with a fucking silver spoon in his mouth, and uh, right, he had no incentive to do fucking anything. He was a heroin. I think it's like a redemption thing. 
to pick up the the cross the cause you know to like redeem himself because when he was younger he was just like a fuckhead and he was all wasted all the time well today's yeah. the anniversary of his uncle getting his fucking head blown off 61 years ago that's right yeah. i think he had a hard wake up one day and was like they killed my uncle they killed my dad you know like this fucking world is evil and he just fucking was like fuck i gotta do something that's that's who knows right i'm writing a fan fiction about this guy <laughs> i have no idea yeah well i hope he fucking does seems like he, he seems legit well, to me, he seems see, and that's that's another part of the problem too dude is we're we're counting on or we're hoping that these people do something I don't know right. why anybody's no even got that in their fucking head. Like, if they're politicians, dude, they're not going to fucking do shit different. Nope. They're going to tell you what we want to hear, yep. and they're going to do the fucking opposite of what they just told us. Yep. If this what, is what how they it's did been working since I was a little fucking kid. Yep. Nothing has changed. Nope. Why would it change? Now? all this has been is a big, uh, big rope a dope in a big show to make us all. Give them a mandate so they can do their totalitarian bullshit with the mandate. There's definitely a reason that Trump was the selection this time. I mean, it's not like they don't fix every fucking election that ever comes along. So the whole whole reason that Trump was selected was they wanted all of those people to go back to sleep. They want everybody to put their guard down and Mm -hmm. trust the plan. Mm -hmm. That's right. And they're going to get some gun control shit in under trump i mean the, 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 maybe the whole thing is i think it's more important is, to get the uh the crypto regulation in now better. now is the time to do it right like I mean, literally the whole, within the next 12 months the whole thing is tainted with the fucking zionist slant to begin with oh yeah absolutely I mean, it's the Israel was the winner regardless of uh, of who was selected, and of course the the loser was once again the American people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they already got rid of Matt Gates and is uh, paying you know seven. He'll be back. Old. He'll be back, dude. They don't worry about. They that. couldn't let that dude be Attorney General. He's a fucking child molester and a fucking cokehead, dude. Again, that was that was subterfuge. <laughs> that was a show. Yeah, he brought out his uh, first impeachment lawyer to... Uh, what, is, what, is, what is it, the big ask? That's in. part of the art of the deal, right? You do the big ask, and then you get the other... Yeah. And then you take your fallback you position. Problems. I read that dumb book when I was 16, and I was like, this dude is a fraud. He, I didn't read it. I don't read books. <laughs> He's gone, man. I, I, yeah, I grew up in friggin' southern New Jersey. Like, yeah. It's, it's, I mean, look, there's nothing wrong with being a confidence man. It is, in my opinion, it is actually a skill. It's something that you have to learn. You're not born with it. You you have to learn that particular skill set. But if that's what you are, fucking own it. Dude's again, an not everyone can do it. He's a pro wrestling Hall of Famer for a reason. <laughs> He's a great oh, actor. Fuck, dude. You know, Jimmy, Dore, I was at Jimmy Dore the other day. And he was like, okay, so why did they, uh, the deep state or whatever, go after him? Why did the media go after him? Why did they try to kill him two or three times? Blah, blah, blah. You know? He's got I'm a like, particular agenda that everybody, like, I think that they slanted the uh, Democratic Party to the point that it was, like, so ridiculously over the top communist that, like, people started to notice. Right. <laughs> And that, that's and, and then they they did because that's what's coming. Yeah, they they had some dementia patient that they were presenting to people as like a competent leader of the world, and then they just like quickly you know slipped in somebody with no substance who like had one one good moment. I mean, whatever fucking technology they were using to feed her answers during that debate she was like more coherent. She didn't answer questions, but she did better than fucking Trump, in in my opinion. Oh my anyway. And then every fucking interview that they got her after the fact, uh, she was just a babbling fucking idiot, like she's always been. And there was like the teleprompter incident where it fucking stopped working and she just started like repeating the same dumb fucking line over and over and over again. Had like couldn't even like pull fucking 30 seconds of 
you know, just random conversation out of her head. Um, didn't get a single vote in the primary. Was like dropped well, that was out. Actually, <clears throat> that was the theme yeah, was of her kind. campaign, Rob. Because it was it wasn't just uh, Kamala that that happened to. It was like other people that had showed up. Because didn't it also happen to? I think it was like Beyonce or, or Cardi B or somebody. Where the teleprompter went out and she was just like, Cardi, uh, it was Cardi, uh, it was Cardi B. Somebody had to hand her a cell phone to tell her the money, the 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 words that she's being paid to say. Yeah, like it's so it's fucking sad, man. Like, is it really worth? I USA, guess it's worth, USA. I just can't even imagine the type of slime ball you'd have to be. To get paid fucking money to read some prepared statement for a political candidate, um, and I, I saw a video of her like I don't know how many years ago it was, but she was talking about how she can't believe in either side; they're all bullshit, and <laughs> they're all well, talk talk bullshit. Walks press release type, you know what I mean? They don't have like any wild individual thoughts coming out. Like those Beyonce entertainers on that level, level. Didn't she? like that's a business, that's a corporation, Beyonce Corporation. You know what I mean? Yeah, pretty much. It's not a person anymore. Yeah, Twenty million. That bitch is possessed. Million. Could be. Oprah, I don't Oprah have any direct proof money. of it, Tom, but I, I, I wouldn't deny it either. She's yeah. probably into no, that. No, I don't have shit. direct proof, but there's, there's definitely some videos out there where that bitch yeah. is doing some weird fucking shit. Well, I mean, you know, Roseanne says Hollywood is run by witches, which, I mean, is suspect because everybody knows that Hollywood's run by the gay mob. But I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt that there are high level people dabbling in magic and, and what other if sorts gay of pedophiles are just arts. familiars of witches? Hmm? You know, Roseanne's hysterical, but she's crazier than a bag full of fucking squirrels. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I said everybody knows that the gay mob runs Hollywood. I when she was witches. floated as the press secretary. I was like, please no. I like Roseanne and everything, but well, most of those people in Hollywood are all hanging out with Maria Abramovich anyway. So yeah, that's true. And she's she the head witch of all the witches. Geffen was like the fucking leader of the gay mafia, wasn't he? Him and uh, yep. Roy Cohn. Yep. Was uh, also that's part of that true. fucking scene. Yeah. I think that was why Mojo Nixon wrote the song Bring Me the Head of David Geffen. Mojo Nixon. Holy shit, dude. I haven't heard that name in fucking ever. And, and Roy Cohn. <laughs> Mojo, man. Roy Cohn. I grew up listening to Mojo. I, wasn't, Roy, wasn't Roy Cohn Trump's mentor? Oh, uh, uh, no. He ran the Trump family, dude. Yeah. That's what he did. And the word on the street is, is he liked uh, little boys with blonde hair and blue eyes. <laughs> oh, Donnie! Yeah. Yes, sir. Hand, Donnie. Big time, Choma. I, I can't. I can't say that anything happened one hundred percent. But why would that dude be running his fa- the Trump family, and then fucking, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, dude. See, here's what people don't understand: is these elites, they either abuse their children, so they become psychopaths like them, or they send them out to a school to do it. Because they don't have the balls to do it themselves. Yeah. First born, they, they were doing that in the uh, royal families and, and nobility mm-hmm. before MK Ultra was invented. Correct. They had their primitive version of it. Correct. And it was, that involved it was typically torture, the firstborn. Abuse. Yeah, the firstborn gets it the worst. I mean, and you instill a black and cold, calculating, yeah. cunning, conniving. You don't have to either. nurture it that much in most families. <laughs> well, fucking... Uh, What's her name came out? Uh, fuck, what's her name? Paris Hilton. She came out and said that her parents sent her to a boarding school and basically like, that's what they did was fucking raped her and fucking all kinds of fucked up shit. That's really? hot. I hadn't heard yeah. that. One of Tom yeah. Hanks' that is kids. Hot. One, and one of Tom, Tom Hanks' Hanks son, kids, same like, shit. Like, oh, that's right. That's right. I forgot about Tom Hanks' kid. Yeah. What's up, Chris? What's going on, guys? Double barrel roach holder. Okay. Fuck yeah, dude. That's like, hey, do you know what the Hoover is? Do you guys know what a Hoover is? Tell us, Tom. No, 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 no. It's a fucking Tudor with two fucking... You know what I'm saying? 
Like you, it's you, so the tutor. You have two fucking tutors going up into your nose. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like the straw okay. that has the thing. Okay, yeah. yeah. I would try that. One. I don't have the lung At capacity least. to work one of those, brother. Yeah, I'd yeah. give it a shot. I ain't fucking around with all that. I did back in the day. I won't now, but I did back in the day. Uh, <laughs> I, one of my I'll friends' any mom free used to have one of those. Once per <laughs> three, four years. Remember, remember, remember. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, I'm not buying it and doing it. But so very kind of, rarely. This kind of reminds me of a, a, a classic scene from The Big Lebowski. Remember when when uh, the dude is, he's taking a bath and he's got that roach clip. <laughs> no, yeah. He's got a roach clip to, to uh, smoke his bud. And uh, it's just one one thing I I I don't hear people talking about roach clips anymore. I don't know. I don't think a lot of people smoke joints anymore. Not not by themselves. I do, but they have a crutch in them, so you don't really need a fucking. Hmm. You know what a crutch is, right? It's a little piece of paper that goes inside the joint. Yeah, so oh, you yeah, don't really yeah, need yeah. a roach clip anymore. Yeah, what well, well, don't don't people still roll their own joints? Uh, when they're in groups, I'll, I'll roll one. I don't, don't, times, like, yeah, like I don't know if a lot of people do it just on their own anymore. I mean, uh, I don't know. The, fucking, there's, the joints there's I get green. are like fucking 34%. I roll THC. about five two gram joints to head. What's up? There's <laughs> um, three or four crutch, so. things that you like grind your shit up and stuff in. They're just so much easier and they burn usually cleaner. Yeah. Like if I rubber. was going to give somebody a gift of some joints in a variety pack, I would use those. Well, well it, it just reminds me of put a little dot. Wow, who's here? Yeah, color it, it code just, it and write it down. Sorry, someone's at my door. It, it just <laughs> reminded me of that clip from the, from the Big Lebowski and he's using a roach clip, but the roach clip is actually a hairpin. This is an hairpin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for a roach clip. I mean, hey, yeah. if in a pinch, it works. Oh yeah, paper clip. Mister T's ear feathers, man. <laughs> Excuse me, BA. Can I borrow this? <laughs> paper clips to clean your pipe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It works. He pities the fool who doesn't get the COVID vaccine. All right, RBL. Oh man, that's a shame too. All my heroes are dead. Literally <laughs> and figuratively. Yeah. Was he your hero? Well, that was on purpose. Oh, sure. Yeah. Is this is is this the Soviets demoralizing us, or it seems like it's coming from it, elsewhere? It's, all right. So it's it. The the whole thing. It's like I see the all the Soviet stuff is happening, but right. I'm not sure it's them. Right. The the no. ideological communists are not the people that um that you need to concern yourself with. It's the people right. who don't want to be seen as being communists who are like funneling the money to the ideologues. Those are the people that you should be concerned about because they will just assume whatever form they need to at the time to accomplish the goals that they have in front of them. I saw the Antifa paychecks hmm? from George Soros's open society at some point. I remember that. Does that fit? Yeah. Okay, I got a handle on what you're saying, Mr. Big Words. Yeah. Giant brain. <laughs> Let's go. Viewers at home, it's you're with just, me. It's understanding how networks work. You yeah. Know, it's because it's never going to be uh, the, the, the person the that you suspect. Follow right? the money.com. It's going to be somebody attached to that person. Because whoever it is that's sure. in front of the camera is not the one pulling the strings it's just that's that's not how this whole thing works yeah uh, i just, this, I just that want to know why all these fucking philanth these fake philanthropists who are uh you know somehow become the spokesperson for any crisis in society because they're just rich and we should listen to them because they're rich uh, like they never go in and like set up infrastructure for like people who can't feed themselves and get wells and, you know, sewage systems and all the things that would be fucking cheap and inexpensive. <laughs> they want to go in and exploit them to do medical experimentation and right. you know, try the, like new vaccines. Yeah, on stuff them. Them full of bunch of new vaccines and shit. Oh, yeah. And just don't tell them. Sterilize that you're like. Yeah, yeah, don't tell the them population. you're sterilizing them well, because yeah. we don't really it's want like, any people. It's like we manipulated the weather and, and 
in a natural disaster has stricken your third world nation, we're going to come in. We offer to build infrastructure and install our banks, and you're going to owe us money and pay us for, for four right. decades or whatever the so, deal. Yeah, so, they do so some crazy shit, and it's like they're giving you a hand up, but they got a knife in their hand, like on uh, Clockwork Orange when Alex is getting fucking dim out of yeah. the water after he. Well, yeah, because that in infrastructure there. that they're putting right. in is to right. extract the resources that are yeah. there. Right. Yeah. That's right. what China's doing right now. Our areas should have the Jolly Roger on them, and fucking everybody should be peg legged with a bird because they're all fucking. They yeah. don't know it. Yeah. Well, here, some of them don't know it. I think more and more do. And then so, nowadays, when people enlist in the military, they know they're mm-hmm. gonna go kill for a corporation in a lie. They don't well, give a fuck. Now, Think about well, that for a yeah. second. Well, like so, just let's go back to the war. The war kickers right? are getting hired. Uh, yeah, uh, but so let's go back to the the word philanthropy, right? And the idea behind it is is good, and I'm sure that there are a lot of lower level, like millionaire types, that do philanthropy and and are actually helping their communities. I'm very sure that there are people that are good hearted about it. But when we get into these bigger stages, like like. Uh, you know, Bill Gates, for example, right? And, you know, we know how it was invented with the Rockefeller when he was giving everybody a coin because he wanted to change his image. Uh, uh, was a dime. He gave him a dime because he wanted mm-hmm. to change his March image. March of dimes. Yep. So um, so we know what his purposes of that was for is to buy your consent. And so when you get into these higher levels, like let's just say uh, Bill Gates, it's he represents, and again, I'm going to say this because he's got ties to this. Uh, I'm sorry, no, he doesn't have ties to it, but, but, but um, technocracy. He's part of the technocrats. When you're at that high level, these these Bezos and, and Gates and stuff and these Oprah Winfrey's, they're doing it for, as we know, what did they say from the, um, uh, the Roundtable Association, right? From with... Uh, um, uh, man, what was that guy's name? Um, anyways, the, the, uh, the round table association where they have the rings within rings and everybody else is just the associates. So we're talking about the mm-hmm. associates. Our circles and then the inner yeah. circle. Mm-hmm. Councils, yeah. Yeah. Soviets. Yeah, it's, wow. it's all based on communist structure. But again, the people that are participating in these particular networks, these circles, these rings yeah. within rings, Okay, are Fabian's not the stuff. right they're not the ideologue communists that are being put in front of us they are of a completely different political and religious philosophy to to get right down to it yeah well they've taken over the academia in the whole united states like um i, I don't know like i i'm sure the same people who brought the uh, Bolshevik revolution to um, Russia and Nazism to Germany Mm -hmm. are the same generational people who are bringing this version of fucking communism here. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they figured out that uh, the Soviet style wouldn't work. So they, you know, experimented in China with a new version where, uh, you know, they're fucking still allowing, you know, celebrity and, Mm -hmm. you know, higher class people to you know live in luxury while the rest of the slaves toil away and i think i finally kids. yeah i think i finally figured it out rob so they used they uh, china was the second test bed right yep. where they where they started fusing uh the ideas of communism and the ideas of capitalism together to get the synthesis that they wanted to get from the Soviet Union and the United States, which for whatever reason didn't happen. And With then because directly south, sa- right. Directly south of China. What do you have? You have Australia, North South Korea. Oh, you have Australia. So, okay. It, it worked with the Chinamen. So let's, let's just send it a little bit further south down there. We'll have the Aussies chew on it for a little bit. You know, and see see what they can make of it before we start sending it out to Europe and Canada and the United States and all that. I mean, all those uh, provinces or whatever you want to fucking call them of the uh, the royal colonies or royal colonies, we'll call them. Like they're all uh, shitting on everybody's freedom of speech. They have no rights to hold guns. They're just at the the mercy 
other than the overwhelming majority of people uh, on the one side is versus the government. Like that's all they have. They don't have the ability to rise up and say, no, we're not going to accept this anymore. Yeah. Apparently and neither do the Chinese. You know, it's, it sickens me to think of the things that they're planning to try to, you know, demonize gun ownership in the, this fucking country. So they can finally take that away from people. Or maybe they won't. Maybe they'll just use the fact that they've already made everybody register and, you know, show up at everybody's fucking door and late night fucking knock the door down, blanket on information. Well, don't forget, was it uh, Katrina when they came in and took everyone's guns? Was it Hurricane Katrina? Yeah, it was which, Katrina. Which... And I don't believe that people got their guns back either. That and that was their like test run of that thing. They're gonna do that thing again. So, so let's let's think about this. So what what was um uh it was uh, Ryan's been putting this on T Lav plenty uh, about Trump and the freedom of speech, right? <clears throat> and uh, how prior to the election he was talking about uh, putting people in jail for speaking against Israel or burning flags, right? He's he, deporting them and stuff, right? So he's talking about, you know, oh, that's right. I remember in that. a sense, yeah. a freedom, in, in a sense, a, he, a censorship is coming. Blasphemy. Okay? Oh, a yeah. censorship is coming. And even he has said it, that, that the, the internet dialogue does need to be regulated. Even he has said that. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's prior to his election. Now he's being elected. Okay, he's going to come into office. Now, now, just like he did with the bump stocks, okay, for and change some of the the uh gun laws okay um mm -hmm. like j j uh, so he he did that prior right so if they were going to do that in this next election do you think people would turn their guns over to kamala no way but gun toting americans who who worship trump yeah, I don't he believe may, so. he may. Well, I'm just saying this is just nah, that, that ain't gonna that's, happen, brother. Yeah, oh, you know, I, I, know, I, know. I don't buy I that. Know, but, I don't buy that for a second. Well, gun owners, most gun owners are gun owners and they realize the uh, gravity of the situation. Well, so, so what I'm getting what I'm getting at is I think in this, I, I don't think Trump's just gonna come out and say, Hey, turn over your guns. I don't believe that, but I believe right reg more regulations for gun ownership and, and modifications is coming. I think in his because he's the guy to help uh, pull that crowd. So, I think right. more gun laws are coming. More gun laws are coming. Uh, because more gun laws are coming. Uh, Obama was able to screw over the middle class and the poor and the working class in favor of helping Wall Street uh, financial criminals and bankers because he was supposed to be representing those people and they trusted and believed in him. And so that's why Trump's uh, bump stock ban was so easily done, I think, because it's like, it's like, okay, this is my body, right? Uh, the guy on the right is in control, so my right eye just closed. And now my, I don't see the right hand. It wasn't, you know, it it just, I don't know why I just punched ah. myself, but it wasn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. You know what I mean? It's, it's like you just yeah, the have whole, the whole of your party. no evil for your side. I was having flashbacks to the Tyson Paul fight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I personally yeah. think assault rifle, weapon of war, whatever you want to call it, bullshit is just the, the nonsense that they use to try to take away the ability of people to defend themselves against a uh, oppressive fucking government. Because if you, if you were like some fucking killer who only had access to p pistols with whatever minimum fucking clip amount that they allow you to buy in the state, which, you know, criminals don't follow the law, but let's just fucking play along and pretend that they did. You, you could just have a shit ton of fucking pistols in a fucking bag and kill more people than you could with an assault rifle. Well, yeah, yeah. but but so what, what yeah. just happened? What just happened within these past several months? Two attempt on Trump's life using these AR. That's true. Didn't they use weapons, Reagan's right? assassination attempt was, to pass oh, gun? Oh, yeah, they did. If, yeah, if they, they did. If they, if they, if yeah, they, that's what. And they want to make another Reagan. I didn't think they made a, as much of a deal about it as they would because you know AR-15 type type weapon. That's what not I always. Not yet. Well, not yet. So right, let's again, just say because people have been about, talking. You think about this though. 
All right, we are still in November. The selection was three weeks ago. Inauguration is not for another two months. All that has happened so far is he's made some cabinet selections. That's it. No policy has been announced. Nothing has been enacted. Nothing has been signed. There haven't been any executive orders. He doesn't even have power yet. Yeah. Well, I guess and so. I'll, so this I'll is all you know, speculative. Power. Yes, and I'll, I was going to say that I'm correcting myself by saying this. Me, this is me speculating. Now, there have been several people that I've listened to on some of these channels that they've, they've been they've been talking on the on mainstream media news is that, that there's maybe. An anticipation for a third, right? A third an attempt on his life. Let's just say that there is one sometime in the future. It doesn't matter. But this is gonna this is what's gonna help his push to say, hey, you know what? There's been three attempts on my life from having these certain type of weapons. It's gonna push for more regulations. And that's saying he's taking it all all right away. And again, this is my speculation. Just the red flag laws for the psychos. We don't like the psychos having the guns. The guns are very huge. I would, I would be more, um, I'd be more. I'd be more willing to go along with it if it wasn't something directed specifically at him. If you were like specifically trying to kill somebody, you would use a fifty caliber um, sniper, and you would be, you know, up to a mile away from your target and not be able to be like picked up right away. Um, anybody who tries to go up and do something up close in a secure area is obviously let do that because, I mean, let's be honest, uh, your job is security to secure the perimeter fucking days before the guy even comes on site and not allow anybody to just be walking around <laughs> with a fucking an ar-15 <laughs> or even a fucking pistol like this is is ridiculous yeah. well, and, like, i don't even think he was shot with a real fucking gun i think he was like shot with some like fake fucking pellet gun or something yeah, yeah we, we've i'm we've, sure they have something to disable drones that fly well I wouldn't, even, just, like, I wouldn't even i wouldn't even i wouldn't even the fact that he's a pro wrestling hall of famer and he used the yeah. razor blade to cut his own ear <laughs> not not to bring up not to bring up because that's exactly what he did, Rob. Well, that's yeah. exactly what he did. It looks more normal the last time and, I saw it. Yeah, and not to bring up anything about the elections, because people, we've been all over through that. But but what what I guess what I'm getting at in response to what something that Driz said just, just before was that um, um, I know that there are more more procedures for creating certain policies and there's going to be you know people that are going to oppose it on both the, the maybe uh, mostly probably on the right but um, i guess what i'm getting at is that trump is the champion he's the guy to champion us through these things and um i believe that so many so many people have put so much faith in this guy that He's going to be the face to if he says, "Hey, you know what? We need to regulate a little bit more with the guns." That they're going to. Here's what I would be concerned. Right on, right on Here's what I would be concerned about are you if I were people in America. Uh, not not that Trump is no, going to come no, for no. your guns. I don't. I you honestly don't, don't think that's going to happen. Me either. I, I don't Me think either. that's something that's on the table at the moment, mm -hmm. except um, in certain so circumstances. I could see it as part of, of like, yeah, you know, like if the meteor were to fall and smack dead center in the middle of the country, I could see, oh, okay, now they're going to try and go and grab everybody's guns because they're everybody's fucking distracted at that point. But I think oh, what's more likely to happen oh. is Trump is going to come for your Bitcoin, <clears throat> um, you know, FDR style. Yeah, I'm sure that too. <laughs> yeah. What I mean, it getting, appears yeah. that's that's what they're going to prop the dollar up with next. So why why wouldn't they do that? Yeah. Because that's exactly yeah, that's, what they did with gold. So, yeah. So here's here's a good question because I was talking with my friend about this the other day, and I was talking about you know I, I've mentioned before that I've just done some recent investments, and we were talking about you know um, digital coin. And um, one of the things that I he, he had brought up and I and then I kind of brought up as well was that um, with what do we know about these guys and the bankers? Zero competition. They don't want competition. So if they're going to create a Fed coin, a U.S. coin or a Fed coin or a, a global coin, let's just say a global coin, 
if they're going to create it's called one, world are they, yeah are they gonna are they gonna want a bitcoin and to challenge them and so different I use cases it could be could be that's, but I that's what crypto is all about it's all about the specific use case that's why you can have thousands of them yeah and i guess i guess i guess oh, yeah, what i'm getting at is that and, and, and this may be just my elementary mind saying this but i believe they're going to try and rein this bit this digital coin in to where yeah maybe they're gonna they're, they're gonna bring it all under because they don't want that competition that's well, yeah. that's my feeling i feel like this has all been baby steps towards their uh global id digital uh dollar digital currency uh cashless society because that's something they've stated long ago then this yeah. miraculously happens and we see it as our freedom and it for a while is, yeah, is they profitable wanted, for they wanted the, poor, the market but to help them figure out who the in. winners and losers would be yes yeah, they rein it in yeah, sounds, yeah. and they control it utterly and they turn off your access to it if you're a wrong thinker yeah and seize that property because you're a terrorist well, and right. the other so thing too is, is as much orange. as cybernetics is a thing and, and does work in practice, you still want to test stuff before you roll it out, you know, in mass production. You want to They've make sure that the, the model is solid forever. first. Yeah. Didn't FedCoin come out? Was it, was it last year or this year? FedCoin. What is they, FedCoin? They, um, they launched a promotion, uh, Whitney Webb was talking about it um, with, um, uh, I forget who, Fed coin. Uh, like the, yeah, they rolled out a Fed coin that banks could opt into. It's it's just a trial right now. They they either did it last <clears throat> July or this July, but I've, they rolled out. It's called Fed coin. I have not heard anybody talk about a Fed coin. Oh, I know oh, that, oh, they, that they that they opened look it up, up their coin. new uh, payment processing system. Uh, it's it, that that's, that's part of it. I think I think that's what the Fed coin was. Was that the right? Fed, but there's uh, not there's not like a token associated with it or anything like that. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's just a payment system. Haven't you yeah. guys heard the latest fantasy of the the right wing lunatic uh, Trump derangement syndrome people that Trump has Ron Paul on fucking speed dial and they're going to end the Fed? Sure, he does. <clears throat> the, I mean, I love there is a Fed coin. I love Ron Paul. There is a Fed coin. He's 90 now. It says right here, a blockchain-based central bank digital currency backed, backed by, by the Federal, Federal Reserve. Reserve. Holy As shit, I sit corrected. What, 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 what did it come out? Was it when, when did they launch the trial or something? Uh, 23. Yeah, last year. Last year it's in July, in a, right? It's in July. exploratory stages and needs yeah. congressional yeah. approval before it's implemented fully. Yeah, and that's what Whitney. That was when, but that was what Whitney was talking about. Was they launched the Fed coin as a trial, and it was voluntary, and you could you could opt into it. So basically, they're they're creating the network or they're creating the the well, foundation. They've been creating the the network and the foundation. Yeah, this it's is a, next, this it's one of the things said. that Sam Altman is extremely busy with right now. Is creating? Yeah. No, I'm dead serious. I, I if you've not been it. following the developments of Worldcoin, I would advise you to start doing so. Because I mean, it's the, likely going to be one of the winners, the, the, along the with problem, XRP. The, the the problem with buying crypto to use it as some type of um, transaction for purchases between people and like, like a peer to peer fucking way is that the fluctuation of it doesn't fluctuate at the rate of the fiat currency. Like the fiat currency doesn't fluctuate um, fifteen thousand dollars of value in like a fucking day, hmm. so well, it's, it's a, hard. A, to, it's hard to use that as a a means of fucking barter because, oh shit! I just gave you this Bitcoin for a couple eggs and uh, milk and you know farm fresh shit, and now it's worth fifty thousand dollars, and it was worth a hundred when I gave it to you. <laughs> well, that's what that's what I was thinking that that um, you know. Uh, in this thought process, in this moving forward, again, you know, many people have showcased this of the people from the IMF, the WEF, the, earlier in the year, they were talking, saying that they expect by the year 2025 or in 2025, 
to be a cyber attack. And what do we, what are the, is the expectation when they do a cyber attack is to kind of crash the dollar. So the, the fiat currency will go away. So somewhere or another, it's going to come into a digital system. Um, I believe that, yeah, probably within this next year, we're going to see the dollar, the physical dollar, the fiat paper go away. That's. Can we please have a moment of silence for me? For you? Yeah. What's going we're on? Happy, man. You know why? All right. I woke up after election day. I was like, did they kill Trump yet? And I just got on the internet and it said Doge dog money was 19 cents. And I was like, I should buy a lot of that. I should buy like $5,000 of dog money right now. And I didn't do it. And it went from 19 cents to 43. It's 43 right now. I just checked. Yeah. Oh my God. That was uh, a nice moment, moment nice of silence. Oh. You never know. That could be your next deal right there. Yeah. I don't know. Nah. As soon, as soon as you like miss that first fucking wave and you try to buy in, that's when you lose fucking thousands of dollars. <laughs> you got to follow your instincts. I, I, I a bunch I'm of a firm believer in following your instincts. Yeah. I, I was like putting like money in like every week. That's like, why I've been shit. hoarding Bitcoin like crazy. I, I was doing it like I was set set doing it every week. And <clears throat> at one point I think I had put like ten grand in and I was like five grand in the hole. And as soon as I got back, I was like a hundred dollars over break even. I cashed it all out. <laughs> I mean there, it's, it's there are ways when you're to doing do that. it playing money you can develop systems to manipulate uh various currencies it's not that hard you just have to you you have to be an analytical type and you have to be able to identify the trends well it's also all about those fucking bots that try to get all the people suckered into buying things well, that there's that too yeah. well price. You you know, artificially go up and the, the person running the scam waits to the point where they know it's going to go up to, and then they yank all their fucking money out and all those people. You know what? Suckered well, at friend of mine, he, I met him on steam playing counter-strike. His name was nine 11 inside job. And I was <laughs> recycled bin lot. And this is like 20 years ago or some shit. He's a cool guy. Anyway, he gets into Cardano and I'm like, that sounds like a scam, you know. I never said that to him. I just was thinking it. I was like, oh, yeah, I was in that same. I was in that same. I don't know. It's bigger than shit right now. It's up huge right now. Well, well, so um, how, how high? I don't know the specifics. I just know it's up big because I I heard my friends talking about it earlier. Well, you know, um, I haven't heard anything uh, as of yet lately, but um, I'm really interested in um, what Corey Hughes is doing on his digital mm -hmm. coin. Uh, because I believe that that if you get a truther community, and that's what really we put it out to is like this this community here, um, it's growing and growing and growing with with people that are have solid um, moral understanding right. of of what we're doing that that I could yeah, I, I could buy that. into that that mm -hmm. could survive like something like that I I, I want to I hope you know he comes out with it soon. Alex, that hurt. I just looked up the price. I sold it at like forty three cents. It's at like a dollar ten now. <laughs> no, actually, it was like easy come, easy go. That's I think it was like I, it. I think. I mean, to be fair, I think it was like seventy cents. But like when I bought it, it was like over a dollar, and it dropped down to like fucking thirty cents, and then like it went up to like eighty, and then it started dropping down, and I like panic sold at around seventy. Uh, I bought ten yeah, Litecoin for sixty-five but, dollars. But over like the last two years, it went down even further, or maybe the last has, year. Has the appointment? I've been holding to, ten uh, Litecoin for like two years, and it's been just like I bought it at sixty-six dollars, and it's just been going sixty-eight. Has the appointment for the SEC 70, been announced yet? <laughs> two years. I haven't heard anything. I don't think so. Because I know he announced. Uh, I think it was Treasury Secretary today or yesterday uh and gensler apparently already resigned so there is no head of the securities and exchange commission right now as far as i understand it i mean he's probably cashing out he's scared I mean, that the fucking hype is wrong. Wrong. oh yeah put ron paul in for interim i mean i'm pretty sure Ga gates wasn't his role his 
he, he was the guy. No, to, I think that was a total play. The sacrificial. That was completely orchestrated. I have no doubt about that. Because here's the thing. Yeah. Whatever whatever it is that they have planned for Matt Gates, it is good enough to get him to say, even though I just won re election, I'm giving up my seat. That is they're, that is basically what he said. I've heard some speculation about this, but I saw it gonna, confirmed by Gates earlier today. He said he is not going to be part of the hundred and nineteenth Congress which is the next one that comes into session, all the people that just got reelected. He's going to be your new senator from Florida, Drew. <laughs> I well, heard that. I don't think the, that's it either. Um, the truth to the reporting I, I think that, that Gates was it. facing criminal inquiry. That's what I was what I wanted in to mind know. in order to shirk. I mean, from, 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 that from, that's what I was considering was because was, he wasn't he involved with some kind of like allegations earlier and i was thinking he was he, he was but he lawyered, his, he lawyered his way out of it but i think the facts of it were that he had given ten thousand dollars over venmo which it's like that's not hard to confirm i mean all your anybody in your contact list can send if you're on venmo can see you sending money to people maybe not a really? amount but the, you you have to put like a comment and and he put some like shady comments to these two uh, young ladies, one who was 17, and he sent $10,000 total. So, so, he was so I guess, yeah, so I guess that's so you guys happened. don't remember the congressman that was in a wheelchair that basically came out and fronted off yeah. all the fucking all Republicans, yeah, said they were all doing coke, them. fucking underage girls, yeah. and then he yeah. lost his job the next day. That's really? He said, pretty much. He yeah. said he got yeah, in. He, he said not, he got he in. Was remember that big bag of coke that slapped oh, the wall when they finally video. got the speaker that, in that yeah. night? They probably got invited to this party. That'll be a good video to watch. I gotta look that up. Yeah. It's it's got to be. out. I'm sure it's been scrubbed from a lot of places, especially um, archive.org. But um, it's it's still out there floating around. I'm sure it's, it's, they can't it's, get everything. You get to look at archive and verify. Uh, D- does let, let me ask you guys because you you're all you know I don't want to fucking fucking point fingers, but you guys are all old like me for the most part <laughs> or older. Um, do you ever remember anybody ever going and speaking before Congress? And getting like a rousing standing ovation as uh, Benjamin Netanyahu did, no. as he's like in the process no. of uh, or that was theater the murders of a bunch of women and children. <laughs> no, that was telling the American people that Israel runs the United States. Netanyahu think, was not uh, wasn't even invited, dude. He just walked into fucking Congress and started running his fucking mouth. I don't even think that's fucking true. I think they have fucking blackmail on a bunch of fucking people through their right. organizations. But what the fuck um, was Epstein yeah. doing? Who did he work for? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think yeah. that's more of their control than the people who actually control shit. Like, yeah. I, I don't think that fucking regional conflict even matters to uh, to the uh, oligarchs yeah. that run shit. Well, you know, you know, it's it's interesting. It's interesting to note that. Um, so today, I was actually re-listening to uh, an old podcast that uh, Sam did with ah, I forget the guy's name, but um, they were talking about you know the Khazars, right, <laughs> and the Khazar Mafia and the Khazar Empire. Mm-hmm. And when you they look at it, to, uh... yeah, yep, yep. So when you look at who this, let's just let's just say the supposed Khazar Mafia and Empire is in existence, right? Let's just say with the Zionists. What are they now doing? They're now overrunning into our political system. Like we're we're, we're a you know <clears throat> an independent country, and it's the way that we the way they do the the way they do it is through this manipulation of claiming to be Israel, God's chosen people, right? And you can't say anything against them. Um, so I believe this is a big Khazar movement. <laughs> That's a nice story. Everybody wants to talk about the Kazarian Jews, but nobody talks about the Ashkenazi Jews. Oh, I talk about the Ashkenazi all the time. Yeah, I think they're much worse than the Khazar. They're definitely more stereotypical. 
That's for sure. Thank you. Isn't, isn't Thank you that part of the evolution? Okay. Isn't that part of the evolution from the Khazar Empire? Because they were, they were more Turkish. No, the Ashkenazi converted from Christianity back in like the 12th or 13th century. They were given an option. Correct. They either had to convert to Christianity or, or Islam. Oh, well, well, that's right. Or Islam. Slandering me. But weren't the Ashkenazis <laughs> of... They were of European descent, though, right? Eastern yes. European, roundabout yeah. Ukraine. So, yeah. So, mm -hmm. I, so, so the Ashkenazi, I, and I think this is one one of the things that they talk mm -hmm. about is how the Khazars in, intermixed with that Ashkenazi uh, uh, bloodline or whatever, and so it's just a, a, an expansion of the Khazar Empire. So there's no rural Khazars, I guess. They became, they you know mixed with the Ashkenazis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as uh, someone yeah. So their homeland is Ukraine. As somebody yeah. with Ashkenazi Jewish yeah. uh, ancestry, today mm -hmm. you, you beg it to fucking offend. It was part of, it was part of the, <laughs> uh, it was part of the Khazar Empire. Yeah, it, Ukraine was a big part of the Khazar Empire. The Ashkenazis come up; they're more in like Russia, dude. Yeah, yeah Black Lithuania. Lithuania up well, there. I mean, Ukraine you know, was part of Russia are immigrating. At one point. The part of my fam, the part of my family that came from that was like back in like the 1700s, according to either it was either my brother or my daughter did a 23 in May, and uh, I have like 0.2 percent Ashkenazi Jewish in me because they, I, uh, I don't know about that though. They try to tell everybody yeah, that they've got I've heard like they some percentage of Ashkenazi, you know. Well, I mean, you can my part. Uh, my wanna... father's part of the family came from Lithuania, Polish, like border area. So. Okay. Well, I mean, well, I, I can see that. Yeah. And so here's, and here's the thought too. Okay, so, so, and this is one of the things that they're talking about in, in that podcast. And I think we all kind of all know this. Okay. So those that are claiming to be Jews per se, that are now in occupying in that land of Israel, right. Are really, Ashkenazi descendants from the Khazars. They're not even real Jews. Like, I don't even know if you could take a blood test that will tell you who is an actual real Hebrew. I, I don't even I don't know. Believe none they of would probably you know, be closer or, to the Palestinians. I would probably say, yeah. Because, the body sticking yeah. out of the rubble. Yeah, so more we like... All I, are I, one collective you know, fucking intelligence. Yeah, so, so I've been out to the Middle East and, and, and in, that, in that region, they look like uh, Arabs. They got you know kind of mm -hmm. fuzzy, curly hair, and, and they're dark skin, but they're not black. They're they're Arabs. They look like Arabs. Um, so the Armenians are you, Jews. Well, I believe you would probably find a more direct line to an actual Hebrew from that region, from from the Ur of the Chaldees, which is in in Iraq. You would mm -hmm. uh, so. Um, I agree I with you. Could, I don't know if they could find that DNA anymore. So. These a semite, are, if you will. Yeah. So, so the 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 people that are claiming to be Israel right now, I don't believe they are true semites. They're not even no they're European enough. murdering the yeah. indigenous Semitic just, uh, people. Just look up the uh, stealing their land. Just look Good up night, the YouTube. Israeli prime minister since the creation of Israel and what oh, their like God, their original name was and what the what name they used when they you know were the prime minister, and they they all had Eastern European last names. There were like Vitches and Skis and stuff like that, and all of a sudden they had some type of like Arab sounding region name, right? And right. All of a sudden, magical. What was uh, Ariel, Ariel Sharon, and yeah. Well, Benjamin Netanyahu's name is he. He's like a Polish or something, Polish last name or something. Yeah. <laughs> Steve always says it. I changed my name to Nabutu Mankwemke, and I took over all of Nigeria. It's mine now. Like if why? Why would you do flavor. that if you felt legitimate, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Like what the fuck, bro? How can you even do that? Did they have twenty three and me back then? Maybe they got misguided by twenty three and me. Look at how many people they've gotten with that, though. Like as as far as I can tell, like Israel is is just the. I mean, it literally is like a an aircraft carrier, for that part of the world, in order to to run the various operations, right? 
like the the human yeah, trafficking, the, the drug all trafficking, the gun or trafficking, or oil. Like it's it's in the exact perfect strategic spot to just be what, able to reach what? out to all the other corners. Not to mention they're the grabbing everybody's fucking data because all the data lines run yeah. through fucking yeah. through Israel. Yeah. What fucking drugs are they legitimately like running anymore? I mean, they got rid of fentanyl. the whole opium. That's my joke. Yeah, but I'm fair. saying they're like they can you can make fentanyl in any lab in any fucking country. You don't have to traffic it across fucking you know country lines and you know take all that risk. Like what? Yeah, it used to be you had to grow opium, and they had you know countries that they used. From you know at least back in Vietnam, well, that's era. why we were in Afghanistan for yeah. twenty years. And, and yeah, w- yeah. W- one of the things that uh, that I think and was Vietnam. Tom, <laughs> one of the things that I think Tom Tom brought up uh, about um, everything coming through Israel, and what do we know with all of the digital surveillance systems now that are in operation within the United States for all law enforcement agencies? It's run from programs that were mm-hmm. created by the Israelis. So. Right. They're, they're in all the security systems among like others yeah that's that's yeah, my joke it's this. like they've been tapping our phones my entire life how the fuck didn't they know about october 7th or whatever you know but um I like <laughs> well i mean, I mean i'm in a different country and they know what i'm doing that that's just as much of an i mean that's even more of an absurdity than 9 11 the fact that they didn't scramble jets to stop you know things you know during that whole fucking thing and they had like 10 different operations going on and, uh-huh. you know, a bunch of, you know, it was all incompetence and nobody lost their job over the incompetence. But yeah, it was just a bunch of, you know, bad fucking mistakes that all happened at the same time. Right. As, yeah. At what so point gotta, does it stop being incompetence? That's, yeah. that's always be been my victim. question. Yeah, but when, but, when, when you have cool. automated fucking gun turns that'll fucking shoot a cat that's fucking, you know, trying to get over your wall. Uh, I'm pretty sure it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. What bullshit well, Ross loves the Aeon Flux videos where the yeah. fucking you and, know, well, fly and, gets zapped. And, and also keep this in mind too. Keep this in mind too that the official story that came out from 9-11 didn't involve uh, all these um, air exercises that were run by NORAD and, and the U.S. Air Force. That came out from independent media guys like james corbett who did a really good documentary the war games of 9 11 or something like that um mm-hmm. so so I, as, yeah something like that uh 9 11 war games yeah from james corbett but yeah, because was i was talking war, with a friend of mine 9/11 war games i was talking with a friend of mine who's he's kind of woke he's he understands the 9 11 this and that but when well, i told I him that he that. When I told him that the war games were going on at that time, he didn't even know. He had no clue with that. So I don't believe people know that there was those games going on to think he was in competition. Dick Cheney's NORAD stand, stand down, down because is, it wasn't announced on the 6 o'clock no. news. Almighty peace. Again, Dick you, Cheney you have to remember that a lot of control. people... Yeah, a lot of people are getting their information still from the same sources. Like, I, I cannot stress this enough my one of the reasons why me and my ex had such a a terrible end to our relationship was because of where we were getting our information from she was still (laughs) getting her information and probably to this day if she's still alive i have no idea i haven't heard from her for a while so i'm thinking she probably finally had her stroke because she did have at least two shots but she was getting her information from CNN. She was getting her information from the New York Times. I know this for a fact. And I have no doubt that that's still where she's going for her information. You know, Washington Post. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you don't uh, know how to pick out propaganda and fallacies in people's writing and... Uh, she did not. She would tell you that she did, but she did not. It's, again, one of the things we would argue about all the time was she she would she would say she was being logical, and I would point out when she wasn't, and she would still say she was being logical. Yeah, I'm like I don't I don't know how to how to proceed with that. You didn't That's attend like, the cult indoctrination I mean, rally. Apparently not. Well, this- just watching like the stupid fucking candidate uh, interviews during the whole presidential election and 
the interviewer is asking a question and you know Kamala in particular can't give you an answer to a simple you know one sentence fucking question and talks for five fucking minutes and never answers it and the person doing the interview doesn't say listen you didn't ever answer my question i asked you this i don't care if you're from a middle class family i asked you about the economy you dumb fucking cunt i i guess that uh <laughs> I, mean, I don't that's think not you can primary. say cunt on right. broadcast that's, television. It's an emotional appeal because we've been dumbed down to the point. It's more of a cable that's thing, but the, the broader appeal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the sentiment. I mean, you don't have to use you know the c word to fucking drive it home, but you know, I was listening, I was listening to a uh, San Triple the other day, and he was he had a guy that they were talking about. Uh, Kamala, right? They're talking about Kamala, this, and and they they brought this they brought this funny this funny uh meme that i thought i thought oh you know this is kind of funny is it what if kamala um like as a as a candidate as a political candidate she's garbage okay um but she's probably a pretty good party girl <laughs> you could probably invite that girl to a party and you'll ask have a montel good time. he would know give her a ricky you'll lake style talk time. show she's the kind of guy she's the kind of gal that you want to invite to the party <laughs> so as a president no political candidate no uh, but party girl, yes. I mean, that's the kind of girl you don't want to get your phone number. That fucking crazy cackle that's that she has. Bad. Yeah, I just feel yeah. disturbing. Well, when she needed the labor. My girlfriend all of a sudden started cackling like that. I would be <laughs> like, scared. I'd want to fucking lock her in the room and leave. <laughs> It does always remind me a little bit of Hillary. <clears throat> have you all noticed that? Yeah. They have that, similar yeah, cackles. That's what I'm saying. Like it's practiced. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause because growing up, sucking dicks, watching that Hillary speech out of the corner of her eye <laughs> in Mayor Maybe. Willie's office. I don't know. You know, she's like, that's how you get there. They're drinking and the then, same you know. That's not yeah, how Hillary drinking. got there, though. They're drinking the same I mean, thing. Hillary's a carpet muncher. <clears throat> she she Hillary got stuff. there because she was uh, part of some crazy shit in college, and she's oh, worked dude. for spooky dudes her whole life. Yeah, and she, and rapists my, and fucking child molesters and shit her whole life. She used to work for the fucking shadiest Rose Law Firm, like the the one thing that they did get busted for, and you know, well, they didn't get they busted. They were murdering for, they people got, just to be governor. They, you they, know, yeah, then when it got they, presidential, they were like, "Oh fuck!" You know, they got scrutiny for a land deal, um, Whitewater, I think it was at the time. But there was all kinds of other shit. Like oh, yeah. Hillary was like involved in all kinds of history. It's crazy because back then, ignorantly, I was like, "They're so cool. They're so much cooler than the other presidents. They're like real people." Look, he plays saxophone and gets his dick sucked. Well, Just I mean, like that me. was that was how they marketed <laughs> them the, right. to the young population. I remember all of that. I voted and then for Clinton find out in 92. Later. You know, I'm not you know, ashamed to say that so I didn't great. try to get some pussy. And they but, destroyed you know, and undercut is the real. What it is. They stole the real and sold us back the fake. <laughs> started all the taxes on the shit. That's why James Evan Pilato's greatest lines. He's got a lot of great lines, but it's great. Yes, I use that all the time because it's so it's so real, so good. Stole the real and sold us back to fake. Uh, every time he says it, I fucking crack up. That's what they do. So don't need it. So my son was born in '92, and his middle name's Clinton. Uh, and so the doctor's like asking me. Uh, are you naming him after the president? I'm like, fuck no. I'm naming him after my dad. Why would I freaking name my kid after somebody who doesn't inhale? Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> I I was uh, in the Navy when he became president. And uh, I was on the uh, Theodore Roosevelt aircraft carrier. And he came to visit us right after he got elected. And... I, I I mean, my personal view is I hated him at that, you know, when I was 19 fucking years old. So 
Um, I worked night shift. He was out doing his speech during the day. And anybody could have call, come on and seen it, and I didn't bother to get out and say it. I kind of regret it. My daddy, my daddy was on this boat. I could have been within fucking arm's reach of the old man, but uh, I feel better for not having died. You could have saved us all a lot of time and trouble, Rob. I don't think that would have happened. Just out of bed. There's probably guys. I mean, I I didn't go out there. It was like in the hangar bay. I didn't go out and see it. No, I mean, it wouldn't have changed anything. They would have just found some other dupe to put in there and do all that shit. And Al Gore would have been the fucking president. Oh, God. Can you imagine President Al Gore? Could you imagine the timeline if I, with Al Gore? Oh, and then we get I changed history that. like that. What a fucking stain on my fucking history. I guarantee you, if we had, if we had, had a President Gore, we would have had a tranny president by now. Gore, Kerry, Oprah, the guy that got busted jerking off George Michael. And then... You know, who's the no, guy that busted jerking off? That's don't you remember that? <laughs> I do remember that. I do remember that. Yeah, there was in a trainee a, hooker in his it car. Was in a Central Park, right? In a Central yeah. Park or something? Or a park or something? Yeah, it was like some really public place, too. Yeah. Don't, don't judge that. people who are fucking out in the dark in Central Park. I mean, that's freaking. That was stunning and brave, if you think about it. Like today, <laughs> stunning and brave. <laughs> <laughs> day standards, it was. Yeah. Uh, he was he was just expressing a little bit of pride is all. Yeah. I remember pride parades were awesome in the 90s because I, I was like fed up with racism and homophobia for real it was legit like back then it was like there were people like it wasn't like a That's joke thing. back in the 90s nobody gave a fuck about that kind of thing and then as you, the years went by, it started escalating into like now we want to indoctrinate your children when they're five years old yeah. um, that they might not be the right gender. It was, it was almost like they were upset. My parents weren't even racist or homophobic. I fucking wasn't. And then, no. but I, I saw others that were. I was like, your parents suck. No, you know? but it was almost like and, they and I were upset that with enough them. people didn't like dislike them. Was the vibe I always got. Right. It's like, yeah, why, they should have been shut down more socially than they were. This? It's like, we, just, we don't care. That's still my attitude. It's, I don't care. Well, they, they also did like a concerted effort to fuck up the whole socioeconomic thing in the black neighborhoods and introduce fucking crack cocaine and drugs. And, oh, no, I was talking about the gay people. Eh, that, well, there's that, but yeah. I mean... There was also that where, you know, they they definitely, you know, made an effort to destroy the black community and fucking break up families and all that shit. Uh, gangster rap and all that shit that right. the CIA put you. out to, uh, you know, make people, you know, glamorize just, uh, you know, banging hoes, so to speak, and moving on from one woman to the next. Yeah. And, well, well Pretty much a father of his fucking children raised by the state. In in both cases, yeah, it's it's it, in it's both because cases, of welfare. Yeah, in in both cases, it would be an engineered thing because what what it right, was an engineered about, thing. Yeah, so what's Social the big purpose about homosexuality and transgenderism and this you know claiming you're you're a girl or some other gender, right? It all goes back to the eugenics popular. It's if you can control the pat was is as right. Thomas Malthus said it. If you can control the passion of the sexes, then you can reduce population more. And then with the black community, it was just, it was destroying the the, the family unit, um, causing the abortions, introducing the drugs, introducing the gangs. And it's the same thing with the black community because they can destroy population. Am I getting this straight, Chris? You're saying men can't have fucking babies, you bigot. <laughs> <laughs> Man, can I have can in Portland. Remember, remember, the Python, remember the Monty Python skit? Remember the Monty Python skit? Men can't have babies. Can we get a trigger warning for any chest feeders out there? Like, uh, uh, post edit? Post edit for uh, chest we're gonna, feeders. We're going to throw it up on YouTube and roll the dice. You do a little post it. something operation. And... I'm still surprised that the channel's there. And they haven't nuked it yet. But which, I guess which, that's which coming, probably. Which is this? Well, which channel? I think the they're going to give us channel. as much free speech as we need to be uh, labeled terrorists and enemies of Israel. 
for the great roundup. <laughs> I see. Here's the thing: is I've been I've been purposely coy on that subject because I know that's coming. I've known it's hey, been coming. I heard you beginning. say something to that effect, yeah, yeah, and that's yeah, what yeah, I was yeah. ripping on. Hey, I've already copped being partially Ashkenazi Jewish, so you guys That's can right. all well, say you whatever you want. If I, I might be. It's all in fun for entertainment. I'm sure I'm at least 13% victim. So. Well, you know, you know, you know, uh, someone, so I mentioned, I might, I may, I may mention this before, um, that um, uh, someone, someone found out my last name and they asked me, uh, oh, uh, were, did your ancestors come from Spain? And I do remember looking at a family tree when I was young, and we did have lines going back to Spain. Obviously, I'm Mexican, um, so when the Spanish came over, okay. Um, so the guy told me, he said, "Hey, you know your last That's name." That's funny. I is thought you were Spartan. Irish. That's conquistadorable. Yeah, like, your, 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 he's like, your last name is is a Sephardic Jew, and I was like, shut up, you know. So I went and I looked it up, and that last name can be traced back to Sephardic. Jew uh, in Spain, um, where my line is said to come from. So I, I, I can't claim anything, but I immediately thought to myself, does that make me special? Am I now something more special because I'm Jewish? And it's just like, it affords me nothing. Nothing. I think you can apply for Israeli citizenship, can't you? <laughs> Should hey. I? Yeah. I'm pretty Should sure that's how that citizenship. works. Yeah, yeah. You're you are allowed. Then they'll warn you, you when they blow up. Yeah, then I, I think they actually they can, encourage it. Then I can start throwing my card up everywhere, right? I can That's start, right. Hey, anti you, you. I'm a Jew. You might even be able to join APAC. For real, right? For yeah. real. Doors will open uh, up to you. Sir. Oh, so check this out. Check this out. So I had this buddy who um, he was a he was a a Christian, but he was Jewish. Okay, and he had he had gone to work in dc as a lawyer okay he went to law school and became a lawyer imagine that yeah and um i remember speaking with him it was it was a couple of years ago when i moved down to florida and the whole COVID stuff was going on and we were talking and i hadn't talked to this guy for a while but he had said that he had found a girl and married a girl there in dc and he said oh, Lord. This. he said this okay he told me this so i'm imagining it's another jew right now he told me that his wife was a lobbyist in Congress or for DC. Now I didn't ask what lobby, but I can imagine that if he's a Jew, he's going to marry another Jew, and she's probably going to work for a certain lobbying firm. And I thought I didn't think, I, but but so when I was talking about the COVID stuff, he was so against what what we know now as far as the reality of the political system. That he stopped talking to me, so I couldn't go back and ask him like, "Hey, man, what 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 lobbying firm does your wife work for?" Um, but I have a feeling that it could be the one that we know. No, there. I'll tell you, uh, K Street in DC is is a very long street. That is the one where all of the lobbying firms have their offices. There are hundreds okay. of them. Because okay. they 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 work for all different industries. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, again, I'm, this is just a thought that came up. Like I don't know, mm -hmm. um, but I'm just. Um, but the idea of lobbying to begin with, like <laughs> I was thinking, I was like, he's he's kind of set into that system. So so when I was kind of giving him a little bit of truths, he just wasn't going to receive it. No, because his his paradigm Brad's works for him. His, yeah, his yeah. D's getting nest and everything off of it, man. What are you talking about? Yeah. Again, people people don't come to the the realization, you know, the the aha moment of yeah. of what exactly is going on in this realm until it literally shows up on their doorstep and threatens everything that they hold dear. That's when yeah, they, yeah. they start actually doing the, the interior psychological work necessary in order to extract themselves from the fantasy. And here's the thing. Even once you start doing that, there are traps set for you out yeah. in the world knowing that you're going to go through this particular psychological pattern 
and we're going to be able to identify it when it's happening because we know what the signs are going to be. You're not going to know that we know that, and we're going to have somebody that's going to yank you back in. Yeah. So, Drew, what's your version? Yeah, Drew, what's your version of soma? <laughs> well, well, here, 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 Drew. I was going to, I was going to point this out. Um, check this out because I think this goes along with what you're saying. Like, let's just say, me and my neighbor. Okay, we we have we have properties where we live. We live here next next door neighbors. Um, they want to pass a certain law. He doesn't seem like whether it's like he, he's not going to vote on it. He doesn't really know anything about it. He doesn't really care. But now because of where I'm getting my information from, and like you said, things that we feel just inherent to our spirit of, of our mutual feeling of wanting to be just at peace with nature and at peace with one another. Okay, something in me says that when I read that, that proposal, I see it as a threat. Now I'm threatened and I tell my, my neighbor, hey, don't you, this is a threat. Now, he may not perceive that threat. I do, so I'm going to either vote against it or not vote on it. You know, I'm going to have a position on it. And it's that that line that gets crossed. The line that gets crossed is is right now there's many people that can't see the threat right now. This, thus, those of us in this community, we do see the threat. So we can say, oh, yeah, I guess I don't know if that, that's what you're saying. No, I was I was speaking more of um, w when people start to understand that the, the system that we live in is actually meant to keep us imprisoned within it. Yeah. Uh, that there there's a specific structure that has already been built uh, that acts as a limiter on human potential. It, we call this thing government. Most people don't get that. Yeah. <clears throat> like there's there's uh, or a pizza or whatever again. Yeah, there's there's an you energy dynamic at play that oh, yeah. is yeah. invisible to the majority technology of the population. Because there's cartels yeah. profiting yeah. immensely, standing ready to murder to well, protect and, and here's, profit. And, and here's um here's kind reincarnation of, uh, also. Yeah. But like here's here's the, one of the things that you're saying that you're talking about is like let's just say when um I was one of those guys when 9/11 happened and then they instituted the Patriot Act I thought okay yeah I'm for the Patriot Act thinking that I don't, I don't this is one of the the reasons that I used in my mind was thinking that well I got nothing to hide so if they were to not listen me. to me I don't really care because I got nothing to hide. I'm not a terrorist. So we and you likely of, saw that Hollywood well, me, blockbuster movie where me, they it, used hacking it, someone's personal yeah, but, shit yeah. to save the day. But to me at the time, at the time, thinking of the, let's just say the higher good of the government, that they would never do this to me. I'm thinking like at that time, I'm thinking like, ah, I don't really care if they, because I do want to stop the terrorists. So maybe there are some people that they should be monitoring, but just not me. And if they did, I don't have anything to hide anyways. <laughs> Right. I was on it. Motherfucker, me, never stops now, there. Me That's now, the problem. me now, this side, me now, this side of the truth. I see what the Patriot Act did, and that was one of the most evilest things that they did to us was enacting the Patriot Act, and because, um, now just, I see it. Now I see it as watch. how Hero President is, Trump's going to renew it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course he will. Yeah. Yeah. NDAA will get renewed. All that will be happen. the first of yeah. 50 red flags that nobody notices. Not the true how believer. Many, um, how many national emergencies are we currently under? Is that like 26 like six or, or seven? I thought it was higher than that. We've been a war zone for like my son's whole life, I think. I mean, since 9 11, we've been. Ooh, on speaking that of, did you guys Did you guys get to see the footage of the cool new toys the Russians have? No. They're hypersonic missiles. No. What's new toys? Drones. Yeah. They're, so, all right. It's a. Um, I, I don't remember what the technical term for it is. So I'm sure people are gonna mark that against me. But basically, what it is it's a. Uh, it's a, a delivery system, where inside the warhead of the one rocket, you can have uh, six other warheads that also contain six other warheads. 
So it's like a wide area dispersal cluster rocket. So that it's it's only one hypersonic. It can go ten times the speed of sound. Right. So you can knock it down. It's just like boom, 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 boom. I mean, it's the light. You should see the concussion bombs they have. Absolutely phenomenal. Is that what they just shot back at Ukraine after yeah. the American fucking missile strike? Yeah. The British missile strike? Yeah. Dude, Did they, you guys see the concussion what? bombs the That's Russians have? No, they I just haven't. drop the bomb, dude, and all the from the concussion of the bomb just destroys everything within a certain radius. Oh wow. So if you're even if you're in a building, it's gonna get you. And it doesn't do it doesn't destroy any part of the building. It just if you're inside it, it's gonna fuck you up. The concussion the building, oh, wow. and it wobble your organs. Well, that's the building no has a better survival rate. I don't think I would like to have my organs wobbled. No, thank you. Shit, having them age is bad enough. I think. I mean, the Russians have come up with a whole lot of shit uh, to kill people. Well, the Ukraines were using, um, I think it was the Ukraines. Uh, they were using uh, drones, but it was like uh, the dude heard it coming. They showed a little video and they heard the dude heard it coming and he was like trying to run away from it. And that thing just, saw and then just blew up on him. So, yeah, suicide drones. Yeah. They've been using those for a couple of years, I think now. Or the latest, um, like you were saying, it's like a cluster. I saw the little oh, video dude. where it destroyed the truck or whatever. Unreal. Unreal the shit they have to play with. Well, but, you know, I mean, yeah, the Russians might be showing a bunch of shit and everyone wants to say we don't have a counter for it. But, dude, I'm sure there's a lot of things we do that they don't tell us about. You know what I mean? The America, yeah. Or even let anybody know for a for that fact that they have something to counteract a hypersonic missile you know what i mean so i mean if you listen to all the uh the people who uh have grand fucking theories of the government i mean they've got directed energy weapons that they start fires right. with like can't you just purposely. use a laser to take out a hypersonic yeah. missile exactly you can only take right out spot. seven of nine or you know what i mean yeah nine of 11 or you know something 69 of 420 one of them gets through and then like you said 16 bombs come off that or whatever yeah i mean we each, may we may be more powerful than yeah Hiroshima. we might be seeing like warfare that has never existed on the face of the planet before which is in in a way kind of exciting but also terrifying i don't I have mean, white guilt it's i don't have terrifying guilt. i didn't the, enslave uh, the, the outgoing fucking oligarchy representation is um, trying to escalate things by doing something that has been said all along was going to provoke a fucking bad reaction. Yeah. I don't have guilt for anything that as, occurs. As, a, as it birth. should. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, but I do have the, guilt for the, the whole thing. actions of my government during my lifetime. I mean, you you fucking coup the government and then you start bombing fucking people <laughs> and make force a reaction out of Russia. That's what it comes down to. So what what do you guys think? Was uh was JFK the decapitation of the old American government? I think that was at least the start of it. That was when the mob got in more control of the government. Quite honestly, than the people, right? They 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 tried it with the Wall Street fucking coup that they attempted back when Smedley Butler was. Yeah, uh, it was back in what? It was thirty three, wasn't it? Nineteen thirty three, like thirty three or thirty five, something like that. Yeah. And he he went to uh, you know some people and they you know ignored him and then he went to Congress with it. And they ignored him. My and wife just informed me, sorry, Rob, that Mike Tyson's daughter died from a cord. She was on a treadmill or something, and a cord got wrapped around her neck. And anybody hear about that? Nope. No. 
Oh, what the hell okay. does that happen? Uh, That's a good yeah. question. <laughs> That's insane. Oh, yeah. I've been on many a lot of famous people in my just die with of... random shit wrapped around yeah. their neck these days. Yeah. Like I, I had a treadmill for years. I had like a cord with like a magnetic thing that um, yeah, if you yeah. pull, like if you were like falling or something, you pull it, and the magnetic thing would when you pulled that off, it would they like still have those. the whole. Yeah, all of them still have right. that uh, that emergency cutoff switch. All but that's what it was basically like if you pull like you could uh, attach it to your chest the string and it was attached to like a magnet and if you pulled it off of that um maybe was there was a cable down on the, the bottom of the treadmill and she fell and somehow it got around her throat and then pulled her hair or something weird and just yeah. did something nasty you know what i mean i, don't know. I, I don't just know. i think it's a, a damn good thing he just got that 20 million dollar payday that's I, because surprise funerals are not cheap, you know. I mean, to sacrifice your daughter, man. I got three kids. I I can't imagine. Uh, fucking, I, I don't know. You know, you know the sad thing is, it's just man, me personally. Is, yeah, but you know the sad thing is, is you wish the best for Mike because I know, don't so anymore. Want, let's, let's just say, well, let's just say this. Let's just say he. Let's just say he did this deal just for the twenty million, right? And he wasn't going to knock Jake Paul out. He was going to take him the distance, get the twenty mil. Okay, he wants to he wants to gain some monetary. I guess he wants to get some money, right? But his reputation, like, why would you want to sacrifice this? And so, to me, it just seems like he's he's been through so much. It's part of his humiliation ritual. I could be, could be because man, this what guy, happens when you sell your soul? Yeah, he's. Yeah, he, he said he doesn't care about his legacy. He threw, but I well, bet dude, he you cares guys, about leaving twenty million to his he threw kids. Eighteen punches in them. You guys punches. do well, know that he was being hypnotized before he was going into those fights when he was younger, right? I didn't I heard, know that. His really. trainer was you mean putting him under. Yeah, yeah. Really? I heard that. So basically, yeah. that's like a double personality kind of fucking thing. There, you know what I mean? I I think that is is possible. He did uh, like based on, on oh yeah, yeah, Mike Tyson on, came out and uh, he said it. Did he that, say it? He admitted yeah. it. Okay. Uh huh. I can see that. Well, sure. Yeah. No. That's, I, that's how compartmentalization works. Look at Beyonce. You you yeah you shit. Kathy O'Brien went over it in her book Transformation of America. They yeah. they have a method for fracturing the personality of the individual into yeah, the compartments. Yeah. And it's it's literally you can have like a three word phrase that you say to the person and it's night and day different. Yeah. Back in I don't know when it was, dude, there was a, a movie of this real famous actor back in like the 40s or 50s, still when TV was like black, black and white. But basically, the movie was about I think it was called Sybil. You guys yeah. ever see that yeah. where yeah. the girl it's, had uh, like six different uh, personalities? Yeah. She's yeah, the, 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 but it was based allegedly on, based the first on a documented movie star. case of MPD. Yeah. Wasn't that Sybil Shepherd? No. That was Sybil Shepherd. No, no. Uh, maybe the little girl. She was had back a sitcom then. called she, she Sybil. Have, no, no. She, I think she may have redone the movie Sybil Shepherd. Uh, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Forget that. Sorry. I, I don't know. I, I, <laughs> anyways, but yes. Um. So now check this out. Now think about this. Just like we know this on a surface level, we know this on a surface level because when certain people talk about certain events or something brings back a memory or a song will create a certain mood and it'll change us. Like we'll feel, we'll start to feel better when we hear a certain song or when someone says something that reminds us of a certain memory, we're like, Oh yeah, yeah. You know, and they'll, they'll change their demeanor will change. So these people have learned this stuff on the esoteric level to where they can fracture the mind to like just like Chris said, with with three words to bring back a certain personality that has been created, like it's this is diabolical. Like that's devious. Well, it's that's what they do to their it's kids. Been, it's been going on since the 1940s at the very earliest. I would be thankful. Uh, quite possibly longer than that. Oh, I bet it's been going on for thousands of years, gentlemen. I mean, I mean you, you remember you that had back in the 70s, you had Dr. George Estabrooks giving interviews 
telling people how they were hypnotizing soldiers during World War II in order to ferry information between the various command posts. I mean, meth is a fucking crazy drug, man. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> it's a hell of a drug. It's a hell of a drug. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Good times, though. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> Had some that good was, times doing that. Was, that, was, that was the uh, catalyst behind the whole Blitzkrieg uh, German army advance. Yeah. Got those guys all fucking cooked up on meth, and they go like, you know, our dang. pilots use it today in our in our military. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was in our gear then. Yeah, uh, you know, pep pill. You know, in some of the, in some of the ways too, like uh, they were talking about earlier on on nature boys channel tonight when he had a donut and paranoid American come on and they're talking about like occultic things, right. And how they introduce this stuff into the most benign things, even as in the Jake Paul fight, they talked about that, how the Celsius and the, the C with the little C, like the 33 and they're in the ring and all this other kind of stuff that he was bringing out. Hmm, the square that, circle, the square circle is that they are introducing us into these occultic um, mindset. That we don't really know as a i'm, I'm going to say yeah, there general, was a, there was a specific esoteric theme to that fight that i guarantee you 90 percent of the people who watched it never even saw it no and this is how I, they, dude i bet you how, the, that percentage is even higher i, so I bet you it's more it, like 98 percent <laughs> this, this is how i they watched it from like the fourth round on and i was drunk and he was just biting on his fucking glove and like the body, every they mentioned the body too. Pro they mentioned the body too. Like, came, didn't even come with like a foot within connecting and jake paul wasn't trying to hit him he, he well, was just trying to like point him and I think it was like Floyd matter what well, so, <laughs> so this is the way this is the way they get us into this is this is the way they get the profane into their real let's just say these secret societies right I don't think they're say, that fucking smart Chris well, well hear, hear me out hear me out these secret societies they have a ritual and it, they're only a part of it okay they want to get the rest of the masses in a, on a part of what they're doing to create this reality that they've created with inside this this temple Okay. I so think it's just a, a raping and a fucking here, 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 here humiliation that these two fucking clowns made uh, fucking between them $35 million to go up here and fucking play patty so, cakes with each other. And uh, well, here, 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 watch Mia Tyson's like training videos. If, you know, if he could do that in his training with his fucking sparring sessions, he didn't do that at the fight. No, and then no, he no. Dude, he was yeah, coaching the kid the when they were fighting. Yeah. So, so let me, let me, let me, let me, let me please just, let me try and just finish this thought. Okay. Sorry. If the secret societies are doing these rituals within their own little temple, they, they've created a little, a little reality for themselves. How did they bring the rest of the populace into their little reality without revealing all the secrets? They do it by way of bringing this thing out in a form that they're not going to recognize the populace is not going to recognize their ritual to be to, to be to be the reality okay so that's who why is there who they, is in attendance so the whole world and that's why they do these things on no, these no, there, was, there was with, one with, specific with person that was there with an entourage uh, yes but so let's just say anything 9 11 hey. right 9 11 was an occultic ritual that they they we are now indoctrinated into this. We are indoctrinated into this 9-11 ritual, 9-11 and all these different numbers and all this stuff. You know, my argument, my argument with that has always been if, if the profane don't really understand what it is that they're seeing, they how no. much energy can it, they really it, be devoting well, to it? And, and here's the Did thought. Did they see here's, Zeus here's the slaying thing. Kronos? No, no, no. Here, here's the thought. Though. Here's the Everybody thought, though. Fucking... When, when the profane, here's the thought, though. When the profane don't recognize what they're seeing, okay? They are seeing it. They just don't recognize it. Now, when you, when guys like you and I bring out the reality of what this thing that they saw is, they can't comprehend it because they've been, they've been indoctrinated to it because they've seen it, but they don't know the reality of the meaning behind it. Does that make sense? So it's a way of getting us attuned to like, Oh yeah, 
Terrorists well, crash buildings into planes. I, I want to hear. And they become I want to hear, yeah. hear Drizzle's analysis of the fight. Like, what was it? The, the who was what there? Was the ritual. That's who was there ritual. that made this um, sketchy? I, I want to hear. It was your you bread saw. and circus. I mean, it was, yeah, it's, it's also literally written. that simple. It was your bread and circus. Caesar was oh, in attendance yes. with <laughs> his entourage. His entourage. Yes. Who are you yeah, not but, entertained? Are you was, yes. It was yes. Caesar. Trump. Trump. When Trump. Trump came in oh. with all of his entourage. Dude, it was. Tulsi Gabbard was yeah. there. He was there. Elon Musk. It was Caesar holding court at the Coliseum. Yes. That's exactly That's the what ritual. the fuck it was. That's the ritual. Like you're you're never gonna yeah. be able to convince me of anything different because yeah. again, I took three years of Latin in school. I studied the Roman culture from top to bottom. Yeah. No fucking different. Yes. I, you know, fortunately, I didn't There's see that. There's something about fraternities, too. I'm, I'm sure that was like, I'm sure that was like the big thing pre-fight that were showing them and the entourage and having all well, kinds of things. Well, well, so so within so again within these rituals, this is how they get us into it. Is because when we see this stuff plain, and then we're shown the reality of it, the average person can't comprehend it because it's like oh, I just I just saw I like a, how nobody a performance. My credentials. I just saw a performance. <laughs> what are you telling me? There's there's a there's meaning behind this performance. She just performed. That's it. You know. So they they dispel it. Does that make sense? So when did Satan take over as the leader of this fucking cult of uh, humanity? Man, you know, I've been try- I have been trying to work out that timeline. I have. I'm not quite there yet. So, Driz, you would understand the Latin mass? Um, potentially. <laughs> I mean, I would probably, I'd have to go and I would have to uh, get some help as far as translation. Because, again, that was more than 30 right. years ago. I can still pick up um, a little bit stuff. of Latin here and there, um, but it's not like my my Spanish right now is better than my Latin. Bro, what do they say in Monty Python when they smack themselves with a board? I always wanted to know. I used to know, but I can't remember. Domine. Yeah. Requiem. What do these words mean? Um, I'll never know. But Domine is uh, of of the Lord. Dominant. Dominus. Uh, dominant. But uh Dominus. Domina. Master. Mistress. Yeah. yeah. Well, why do you think Catholics hold confession? So they can blackmail those motherfuckers. <laughs> I'm serious, dude. I believe it. One hundred percent. I believe it. You go to the priest and you tell him all your dirty deeds and then he tells you to say a couple Hail Marys and an Our Father and you're good to go? Well, if God knows everything, why the fuck do I need to tell a priest what I did wrong? Right. Wasn't wasn't there also something in the Bible that the, somebody said, let there be no man between you and God? Well, I mean, that's the difference between uh, just, people. No, no, you're you're right. It's the difference is. between the, the people who believe in like the Pope as a holy figure and the people who believe that God is the holy figure and there's nobody between you and God. Right. Um, it's orthodoxy versus the mainstream, or I, I don't know what you would call. It. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. actually, I like I like the fact that the conversation has just anarchy taken this turn versus religious. As we approach midnight statism. on the East Coast, because it it just reinforces in my mind the fact that what we are born into in this world is a fully illegitimate system there there is nothing legitimate about any of this shit at all born into brainwash even though people want to continue to prop it up and make excuses for whatever is their favorite part of it it's it's all none of it none of it's fucking true there's, None of there's million, millions of people with millions of different, or I'm sorry, billions of people with billions of different opinions. And, and some of them are uh, being influenced by 
you know, groups of people. All kinds here, of stuff. Here's, yeah. Here's one thing I wanted. Here's one thing I wanted to touch on that I didn't get to touch on earlier. Going back a little bit, just uh, going back to the ritual concept. Okay. And um, I was listening to these guys, and I've I've been on this for several months now, almost a year now, of the ideas of the clowns. You might be obsessed. Clowns coming, clowns, and the association with these uh, ancient bloodlines. Okay. And clowns. The nephilim. Okay. Yes. Now, now check this out. Now, what what are what are clowns associated with? The circus. Okay. Uh, and when you look pedophiles. at the proceedings of the circus, yeah. So when you look at the proceedings of the circus, you have a ringmaster, and he's got mm -hmm. the top hat, like just like the masons only wear. He has the staff. He controls. Mm -hmm. He's mm -hmm. the the master of ceremonies. He's Break the down the epistemology for us. Okay? He's the ringmaster, and he's got the clowns to to bring us in and to bring the the populace in to show them rituals that they practice in secret on the real but they're displaying it in a entertaining kind of way to in introduct indoctrinate the masses with their uh entertainment or, or their theater and so that's what i was getting at was that um these things that we see, especially with entertainment and media, it's all propaganda to get us into their rituals. That's why they got the predictive program. It's they believe in karma, Chris. They have to they tell do. you what they're doing, Revolution show you what the they're method. doing, or it comes back on them. They do. So if we don't do anything consent. about it, they just keep doing this shit. Yeah, because it's consent. It's done by consent. Yeah. In their eyes. Mm. Well, who's pushing back on the fact that we're using um, ballistic missiles in Russia uh, and provoking them to make an ex, you know, provoking them to do something where the propaganda here will talk about how evil they are for doing whatever it is they do in retaliation. I remember there were kids in the streets screaming about Taco Bell's tomatoes. I remember. <laughs> Really? Didn't, they, they were found um, to have not a really large, a large uh, African American female with a megaphone at the courthouse, shushing all the white people around her and telling her to get to the back. <laughs> it's like a circle of people and screaming. I remember that. I've never seen anybody be like, "Oh, we're using our satellites to attack Russia." That's fine. What's on Netflix? He said, "What's on Netflix?" <laughs> I don't know what's going on, bro. Well, so here, you know, here, check this cuties. out. Cuties. It's it's called cuties. Okay. The I think we're like, in the perfect yeah. spot for another, um, another shock. You remember the the shock waves throughout the the decade as as we get closer and they got closer together as we got towards the end of the decade. Does anybody else remember seeing that graph where like no? All these different events were occurring as as the wave went yeah. up and down. No, Damn, I wish I could tough. find that thing I again. That. I can't remember what it was in. I mean, the whole limits to growth thing from the seventies. We just all know it. we've been living through it. It was, it was a fucking yeah, debacle, been. and it well, didn't you know, work you guys, out. So, like all the bad predictions they made, now they like are starting to escalate things. Maybe they're using weather machines. Who the fuck knows? Well, yeah, know, right. You know, I was gonna I was gonna mention this. What's funny? Because uh, uh, RBL, you brought up uh, Netflix, and um, just recently I started watching. You know, I don't watch. I watch movies with my kids, and recently they got into anime. Okay, and there's this new anime series on Netflix that came out, and it is, it is a series that incorporates occultic ideas like cryptids and stuff like that with aliens so it, it incorporates spiritual stuff with aliens and it's in this cartoon and as i'm watching the cartoon i always stop and i'll point I'll point things out to my kids like oh this is they got this from that oh they got this from that this is how they're indoctrinating us is through mm -hmm. the entertainment yeah that's how they've always I've done it. Doing it always yeah yeah that's that's what hollywood was created for uh that's that's what television was created for um, Maybe radio. And it's, well, it's funny because as I'm watching this this anime with my kids, mm -hmm. I'm there to stop it and say, "Hey, this is where they got that from. This is what they're this is what they're talking about when they're talking about the chi and coming up." Like I was like, "This is it." And and I know that they kind of they get me. 
okay, Papa, start the show. And it's like, you know, so I'm always telling them, but I'm here to, otherwise, the next family, they're just watching this and being like, oh, shit. <laughs> you know, like. You know, we talked about the Romans earlier. Uh, a thousand years ago or whatever, they had their demigod legends and plays and whatever performed as the demigod legends doing their brave deeds or whatever, their great things, their miracles or whatever. Marvel. And then we've Marvel got comics. Marvel superheroes and we've <laughs> got, you know, American Sniper and all this bullshit. We got Hulk Hogan, Hulkamania. We are a republic. Yeah. So we I mean, are, we are being brother. governed as a republic. We're in the cave. We're in the cave and we see the shadows. And we're just like, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. We're in Plato's I met, I met some college people. It was fraternity parents and their kids moving into town. I think I was like a cab driver or delivering food or something. Anyway, they let me in on some shit. I don't remember what they said, but I left there like brains just going like I had some really culty like experiences with these people. Oh. And it was like not as Americans, but as Romans. It, it was the, the idea that I got from them. Was that your last that makes any sense. Like this fraternity thing, this sorority fraternity thing's like deeper than just like a club, you know? It's like some some there, shit, there's some traditions. Some, yeah, some there are, there's such. some cult cultish elements to the to the whole Greek yeah. thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've observed that personally. Yeah. Guys might be a little high. No, just a little bit. It's all it's all occultic stuff. It's all it's all knowledge that we don't know that um, um, they keep hidden from us that they're operating under. Because if we knew this, then we could we, we would see the emperor with no clothes on. But you know, when we see the emperor with no clothes on, we're just like, oh, now it's a it's a drag show, <laughs> right? Everybody oh, saw the emperor <laughs> with no clothes on. He was an incoherent dementia fucking patient, and he uh, yeah. shifted, he shifted but, form but see, over well, the last thought, four though, years. Is, well, here's the thought though. Now he grew, right? Now he grew. he's way, the only president who ever grew while in office. Imagine this. Imagine this. Okay. Imagine. Joe Biden back in the 60s or 70s, okay? People would see the emperor with no clothes. Now in today's society in 2024 or 20, 2020s and, and, and whatever, we see this guy. We don't see an emperor with no clothes on. We see a drag show. Does that make a difference? Because back then, the people would have been like, hey, he, emperor's got no clothes. Get him out of here. Now they see a drag show. Oh, bring it on, drag show. Yeah, but can you imagine of America? Could, could you imagine at that age in your life um, having so much shit against you, where they can put you in jail until you you know die, or you can go be the president? Like, I mean, that's basically his his whole fucking crime family, yeah, protected by whatever you would call it, deep state, whatever. Well, but, that's the psyop. That's the psyop that they've that they've converted the mindset of, of the, the masses to I up, it's yeah. just the fucking reality of the yeah. fucking oligarchy running shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. But 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 this they, goes they back built to like, the system to create the humans that they wanted inside the system. Yeah, this goes back to mocking Operation Mockingbird. This goes back to uh slided weapons for quiet wars. It goes it goes this back before that. It goes back to, to Rockefeller helping redefine the education system in order to yeah. be able to put <laughs> yeah. bodies in factories to do jobs. Yeah, yeah. And the medical system. And and, yeah. and to get women out of the out of the, the household into the workforce. Eventually, yeah. Eventually. But you had to build yeah. the workforce first. Because at one point there was no workforce. They had all these factories that they were going to build with all these machines that they were going to put inside them that was going to make shit, but they didn't have anybody to perform those jobs. So they had to fundamentally reimagine the country. Oh, and lo and behold, uh, we have this new thing that we can do called civil war. And you can just free yeah. all those workers down in the South and bring them up to your factories when you do that. Yeah. And, and when, Imagine and that. So and when, when they give women's uh, liberation, right, 
okay? You can smoke cigarettes. You can vote, okay? Get them into the workforce. I want to have a career too. It breaks up the family unit, okay? So now who's con- who's running the kids? They go to school all day. If something happens. The state comes in. They are they are now state property. This is this is them taking the progeny Worse. out from the household. They're destroying. They are indoctrinated to uh, narc on you for being any anti-state sentiment, like sentiment, like in 1984, right? Like the kid that narks on his parents. His dad gets taken away. Isn't that a thing that happened in 1984? Um, RBL, I did hear you speak very ill of the uh, current uh, dictatorship. So (laughs) he's going to tell on you. He's going to tell on you. Hopefully, I won't tell him where you are, RBL. Dude, I never that that thought never ever crossed my mind as a child to wrap my parents up. Rulers by turning you in. (laughs) Well, I remember in school they would be like, "Have you been spanked?" You've been child abused. Like, come tell on your parents. You know, like there was dude. Like I went to college. Catholic school. They'd fucking smack your ass for whatever the fuck they wanted. Thank you. May I have another? Yeah. Thank you. May I have another? <laughs> well, I will say yeah. you may, uh, but so not not head. not tonight. Not next week because we're off the air next week, except for uh, next Wednesday. November 27th, 4 p.m. Eastern, Matthew Crawford will be coming through. All right. uh, but that is it for our broadcast night, ladies and gentlemen. You ain't got to go home, but uh, you can't stay here. We'll see you again on Later. December 3rd. We'll be back on the air. Good night, everybody. All right, good night. <laughs>